All right, guys. Um, hope the wind's not too bad. So I'm back at home at the moment. Um, so to, we had to take Mandy in for an emergency procedure yesterday. Um, well, sorry, let me back up. They took her off her um, her regular, the medicine that she takes uh, to battle this pain that she's been having for, you know, ages now. And um, they put her on some steroids and some other things. And uh, so part of her pain problem was she had this fluid, it's hydrocephalus is what it's called. She had this fluid buildup on her brain. And um, since the time that they took her off her Excedrin and put her on this other stuff, well, even before that, from the time they did her MRI till last night, her, um, that hydrocephalus had actually gotten worse, gotten way worse. <clears throat> um, so she, last two days, basically, she's just struggled with pain, not a whole lot of relief, nothing really giving it, giving it any changes. Um, so last night I just forced her to, uh, go to the emergency, MD Anderson emergency room. So I called the number and, um, there actually is an emergency room and acute, uh, cancer care or something. You know, if anybody's watching this and ever wonders, there is actually an emergency room, but it's not called an ER. It's called an acute cancer care center or something like that. Uh, but so I called the number to that, talked to a dispatch person. They told me to bring her in, brought her in, um, even more pain. Uh, just the drive over made it worse. They continue to put just, just pump morphine and Dilaudid and whatever else. I mean, she doesn't take pain medicine, but the, the fact that nothing they were giving her was doing anything. So they finally got her, um, I wouldn't say numbed, but uh, under control enough um, that, I'm gonna hold my hand behind the microphone, under control enough that she could lay down and do a CT scan. And that's when they found out her hydrocephalus was worse. Uh, in which case they come in the room and was basically like, got good news and bad news. And but basically the bad news was, I've got to drill a hole in your head immediately. And uh, you're going to be sitting in ICU for the next four or five days waiting, waiting for your surgery to happen unless they move it forward. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, procedure took, took them about an hour immediately after they'd done it. Uh, the doctor come and in, come into the room, like the moment he, it was done and they were wrapping up, cleaning up. He came in and told me that, uh, her personality just flipped like a switch. Now, mind you, let me tell you this detail. She couldn't be put to sleep for this procedure, So she was awake for the whole thing. Um, they said that the moment they relieved that pressure, she began talking and laughing, like kind of playing, because they had they had doped her up pretty good uh, before that. So the, when they relieved the pressure, she kind of snapped out of it. But uh, yeah, but it, it went well. Um, there are some dangers with this. Obviously, she's got an open open hole in her head. She's laying in a stationary position for the next three or four days. She'll be in ICU care until her recovery period after her surgery. So. She will very likely be in ICU for the next week. So they'll have this port in her. And Tuesday they'll do pre-op for the other the other par portion of the procedures uh, that they were planning on doing. Um, so yeah. So there's the update, guys. Um, like I said, it's tough to text everybody. I don't. I swear, at any given time, it. 2, 3, 4, or 5 a.m. this morning. I had 30, 40 texts, which is amazing. You guys are praying for and, and reaching out and seeing what you could do. Um, it's very, it's very appreciated. So, um, it's, it's a scary situation. I'm happy right now. They've given her some relief. It's, I feel relief just knowing that, that she's feeling somewhat better. Um, so we appreciate it. And, you know, and I, everybody and their brother is asking, you know, what can we do? I don't know. I, I don't know. Things are complicated. Um, I don't even know. So 
those of you who are closest to us um well i'll keep you posted on on what i think i need right now but um uh, between me and sarah and alana uh, especially today um so alana's here with us this weekend actually came over to spend some time with her before her surgery and um the only time she's got to spend with her so far was sitting in the bed watching her hurt so I'm gonna get her to the ICU to visit with her today and actually have a conversation with her now that she has some relief. Um, and we'll go from there. So uh, probably no updates until um, surgery Wednesday or so. So thanks for, uh, thanks for everything um, from everybody and, and uh, thanks for the prayers and the thoughts and um, crazy time, man. Crazy time of life, so. And, and and those of you who aren't on the on the on the fence or on the side of the fence with me of of faith and prayers your your thoughts and positive words are uh, are uh, nice absolutely nice too uh, it, it's good to it's good to hear uh, you know a couple of you've reached out with you know success stories of something similar and you know hey I'm, I'm taking it all in so thanks for everything talk to you soon <laughs>